All right, we are back, and this time I have Jen Nichols. She's the Director of Career Services at Ivy Tech Community College. Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll get right into it because I don't know what career services means at all, so can you tell me what you do there? Yeah, that's a great question. A lot I of people, a lot of people ask that question. Sure. So in career services, we do a lot of different things, um, one being advising and assessment of programs. So if a, a student or a potential student comes in, uh, we definitely give them options. We assess their current skill levels, what they're interested in, help them pick a program. We also do resume and cover letter writing, uh, which is a great program for our students and alumni. A lot of people aren't aware of the changes that have happened with those documents. Sure. Um, we also do job search, um, job searching. We help them with the process of that. Um, no longer can you really knock on doors and mm -hmm. walk down the pavement with your resume. Um, there's a whole uh, process to that so we help them do that and then interviewing skills so we help wow. them with that too so you're really kind of the support system for the student as they come in the door yeah, then. coming in and going out right so I yes. can come in and you're gonna teach me all the things I need to know to get a job and then you're gonna help me find one I That's sure it am. sounds like yes. that's great uh, so do you have a lot of employers who work with your uh, department to help yeah that happen? we have approximately 4,000 employers um, in the in the Kokomo region that are registered with something called job zone for our students, we have a, a program that it's like LinkedIn or um, Indeed mm -hmm. or Career Builder where we post jobs. So we've got a lot of employers involved with that, and uh, and they often come to many of our events. Wow. All right. It's been a long time since I filled out a resume. Yeah. I, I've been pretty lucky that I've been here for about 15 years That's now. That's excellent. Um, so, but I do see a lot of resumes, and I'm not always happy with what I see with yes. people who are looking for a job. Can you tell me what kind of things you see on a resume that really are a red flag that, that, that aren't so good to see? You know, one of the biggest things is an objective. So a lot of people, they come in and they, they have their resume documents, and every single time I see that, that line up across the top that says, you know, seeking entry-level position, sure. uh, wanting to utilize and strengthen my skills and abilities. That portion on the resume is the most important portion on that document. And, and those people are wasting that space by telling the employer something they already know. Right, you want a job. Yeah, I, I got they already it. know right. that. So we want to use that space to advertise their skills and abilities versus just, this is what I want gotcha. you know, out of this situation. We want, to, we want to tell the employer what they can do for them. Sure. Mm -hmm. I've heard that, that it's, a, it's a tell versus, or a show versus tell situation. Yes. You can tell me All what your along. education was and what your, your job experience yes. was, but if you can show me in that same resume yes. uh, what you accomplished in those fields, is that is that Yeah, yeah, true? and I, I think the other thing people miss is, you know, there's a job description. When we're applying for jobs, there's, there's a document that's telling us exactly what employers want out of our education, training, and skills, okay. and a lot of people end up mass sending their resumes out, and they don't sure. change anything on those, and, and what they should be doing is looking at that job description, reading it thoroughly, seeing what skills they have, and then putting that into that resume document. Sure. So making sure that's a, a tailored document. Now, if there's something you could forewarn these people that are out there looking for jobs, yes. what would it be that you would forewarn them about? Uh, you know, even when you get interviews, you need to make sure that you you keep applying to positions. Um, and, and the process is long, and finding a job is a job. Mm -hmm. You know, networking is, is something I can't stress enough. So anytime you could do business after hours, business before hours, um, networking nights, mm -hmm. um, there's quite a few now popping up throughout Howard County. You know, definitely do that, because that's how you get a job. It's who sure. you know and, and the perfect timing piece. I gotta stop you right there, because you know, after I asked my first question, you said it was a great question. I felt really good about it. Yeah. I've asked you like three more questions. You've not told me they were great oh, questions. Oh, I, th I think they're all great questions. Okay, thank you. I'll I tell you at the end again how great uh, you're that's doing. That's great! <laughs> <laughs> I need that reassurance. <laughs> so, is it important to keep your resume up to date? Oh, and... yes. Oh my gosh. Um, I tell students I'm nowhere near that looking for a great question. That, that was, was a really question. good question. Good. Sorry, go ahead. That was a really good question. Um, I tell students that I, by no means am I, am I looking for a job. I love Ivy Tech, mm -hmm. but I am constantly, every time I obtain a new skill or a new qualification, I'm mm -hmm. pulling my resume document up and I'm adding that. Because what happens if, if you know, there's a layoff or what happens if you have to start searching for a job or your spouse gets relocated? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that that document is completely up to date, ready to go, and, and ready to apply for jobs. Well, that's good advice because, you know, after today's show, I may need to update that resume. I'm yes, gonna yes. Good. We're going to take a break right no here. Problem. I've got some more questions for you in just a minute. Great. So thanks a lot. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, so you are doing I didn't know. Somebody's supportive around here. I don't know who it would be, but hey, guess what? We're back on there. <laughs> I told you it would happen like yep. that. You know, in the, in the interest of full disclosure,
Coach, I need to let you know that I did not come up with any of these questions. Oh, she did. No way. She came up with no, these. So, no. So, of course, she's going to say they're fabulous questions. So I expect her to every be cheering time. after every one of these. That now, was a so. great question. <laughs> That was a great comment. Isn't it though? Yes. So <laughs> how do you connect the employers with the students in this process at Career Services? You know, again, we have that, that program called Job Zone. So there's a lot of employers posting positions on there. But we also do something called um, Networking Night. Mm -hmm. So um, have you heard of speed dating? Yes. I mean, it's an awful experience. Is it? Yeah, Tell it is. It. No, no, no. Have you been but to I have. It's, oh, it's really? awful. But uh, have you seen the movie Hitch too? Yes, so, I have. so there's these tables set up, and then there's you know dates on one side, males on one side, females on the other, and, and the bell bings, and they get three minutes apiece, and at the end you decide if you want to connect for sure. a real date. So what was your what was your stick? What was your piece? What? Oh, um, we're on job fairs and career services, you know and no, oh, not at all, on. no. Um, all right. So we do that with employers. We speed date employers with students, okay. so they get an opportunity to talk to 30 employers in a two-hour period mm -hmm. and make those connections and see who you know they know and how they can mutually benefit each other okay. um, and then we also bring employers on campus so we have employer tables about once a month or we have employers come and speak to students take applications so there's a lot of different things we do for the students and alumni so your your last job fair was a pretty big success. Is that is that true? Yeah, there was um, approximately sixty five employers and uh, seventeen hundred people walking through the 1700 door. Seventeen hundred people. Yeah. Now we had um, sixteen hundred actually register, but we're giving that hundred, you know, that snuck in the walk around in. the side sure. that didn't register. Wow. So yeah. uh, are you planning to do another career fair if it was that if that successful? Yeah, yeah, we do two actually. Mm -hmm. um, we do um, the one in the spring, which this spring it's a April fourth from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And, uh, and that event is going to be exciting. We, we're hoping to have more employers. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping to have a lot of different employers for different programs so that everybody that comes through the door has somebody that they can talk to. And, and we're hoping that this is a great thing for the community and people that are job searching can come and try and find a job. Sure. And popcorn? Popcorn? Yeah, we're trying to figure out the food thing right now. I think popcorn would be good. We're working on the food thing, sure. yeah, so they can get all the kernels stuck in their teeth. Absolutely. Right. Awesome. I'll work on that. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's see. What is a job fair anyway? That's a great question. Isn't it though? <laughs> um, a lot of people have a misconception about job fairs, you know. And um, this is a place to be professional, to come dress for success, to to wear business casual or, or even a suit depending on, you know, the, the position that you're going for. So, you should be bringing your resumes and, and be ready for a potential interview on the spot with these employers because they're looking to fill positions. Great. Now, you know, one of my favorite things to do is go through the classified ads, and I find those, uh, those ads where they say that yeah. I can fill envelopes and work from home. Yes. And I can't wait to do that kind of stuff because I know it's just going to pay off one of these <laughs> yes. days. But I end up, I have to pay for those envelopes in advance. Yes. I never seem to get that money back. So yeah. do I have to pay to go to your job fair? No. I don't. No, it's totally free. That's another great question. Um, it's totally 100% for free. Uh, yeah, I'm and, feeling good right now. And we did have quite a bit of a line, though, last year. So, you know, making sure you get there a little early and, and you're prepared and ready to go mm -hmm. um, is the best advice I can give anyone that's going to be there. All right. So I need to be dressed well. Yes. I need to have my hair combed. Yes. Uh, I work on that a lot. No pajama pants. No pajama pants. No pajama right. pants. That's off the, but what else do I need to bring besides myself to be successful at your job fair? You know, I would recommend that you would bring your resume. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have business cards, that's always a nice touch. Obviously, you don't want to use your business cards for maybe a position that you have currently. Uh -huh. But if you have like a generic business card. I should card, make up my own business card. Maybe, yeah. That would be great. Um, and then also, you know, a pen and paper. Sometimes there's a lot of questions being asked or sure. maybe there's material that you want to write down. You know, I definitely always appreciate people being prepared, so a pen and paper would be good too. Now, how do I set myself apart from the other candidates? Because, so, you know, unemployment has been high for a long time. Yes. And there are a lot of people looking for the same jobs. You know, really, your, your job <laughs> search documents are huge, making sure that those are professional, mm -hmm. that somebody's proofread them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize you really need someone else to read through it. Sure. Um, making sure that you don't have any mistakes on those, on those pieces of paper. So, you know, that's a huge piece, but also just coming dressed professionally. Mm -hmm. I can't stress that enough. A lot of people came in um, last year that um, they weren't dressed for interview on the spot. Sure. And so they were surprised when somebody wanted to talk to them uh, for more than 10 seconds. So right. making sure that you're, you're dressed professionally and, and comfortably so that you can get through the day. So not props. 
No props. Okay. I don't think props. I don't think you need any Well, I, I wonder because, you know, we just hired recently. Okay. And I had resumes sent in from all over the place. And somebody sent me a little box. And when I opened it up, here's this little action figure guy. He's a little red. He's got a little spear. Yeah. He hangs from my lamp. And I remembered him. I didn't hire him. Well, and, and I think that there's certain occupations mm -hmm. that those unique pieces are fantastic for, such as radio or maybe the newspaper. I've seen... Sure. Uh, uh, things on the internet where somebody had a door and they sent the whole door to the employer and sat and wrote on it and said I just need to get a foot in the door again wow. that person That's didn't hire them but it was unique enough that they talked about it sure, sure. so I, I would I would say that maybe staying away from those really unique things for the job fair all right so let's talk about that job fair one more time when yeah. is it again it is April 4th mm -hmm. it is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Kokomo Event and Conference Center on 31. Excellent. All right, yeah. Jen Nichols, thanks a lot. So nice to meet you. I've had right. fun. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Hey, when we come back, we'll have yet more Ivy Tech. Yay.